All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft, joined here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And guys, we are going to have some fun on this episode today. We are going to do a live 2024 NFL mock draft for the LA Rams. So the way this is going to work, and Jake, correct me if I'm wrong, but the way that we're thinking of doing this is Jake has the PFF mock draft simulator pulled up, and we are going to go through as the Rams and alternate making picks. So, you know, one of us will make the first round pick, one of us will make the second, we'll discuss possible trades, we will pick the prospect, and at the end, Jake and I will have put together our perfect 2024 NFL mock draft for the Rams, and we're curious... After the episode, we'll have to hear everybody's feedback, Jake, and see if people thought that we did a good job drafting for the Rams or if they would have changed anything. But this is going to be a fun way for us to kind of get each other's knowledge about the prospects and see where we how we feel about some of these guys, even though we, we've obviously talked about it. We've obviously interviewed you know people on our show, but there's a lot of prospects that you and I haven't talked about that might come up on this episode. So... Yeah, this is fun. This is a fun little live mock draft. We haven't done this in a long time. Well, this, we've never done this before. This is like workshopping. This is like like a trust fall, if you will. We have Because we've never I done anything why. like this. Because oh, we're okay. not... So just to let you guys know, we're not going to show the... Because, I mean, we just want to do it this way. So we're not really going to show it on the screen. I'm just going to kind of, you know, we're going to go through it. We're going to, you know, make our selections and decide certain things. And we'll be talking about players that are on the board and, and stuff like that. Um, and we'll we'll give our analysis and things like that. But it's not going to be anything that's like really cookie cutter. This is definitely new. This is something we've never done before. Yeah, so. This is just if you want to sit back and relax and listen to two Rams fans try to draft their best yes. draft for the Rams for this year. I'm We're just chilling. I've actually got... A sweet tea here for those of you who can see. Anyone else a fan of this Arizona sweet tea? Does it still cost ninety nine cents? <laughs> it does. It literally there is exactly ninety nine cents. In I this went economy, to the gas station. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Have you seen? Wait, all so the are memes? you saying all those memes are misinformation? <laughs> no, I've seen memes where it's like in like you see the price. Yeah. skyrocket on something and then people are like an arizona sweet tea is literally still 99 cents like if they wanted to they would right if i've seen that wanted to, yeah i mean no but this is uh i got my vitamin water i'm actually looking at this now there's like probably caffeine in this so you're gonna be bouncing off the walls it. yeah um, i'm gonna go to bed at 2 a.m it's all right I'm putting it um, on slow to start in the first round let's have the conversation first here okay for those people that know me and know what I've been putting on, you know, the Jake Allen Bogan channel, they know, Alexis, I really, if push came to shove, would want to trade up. But what say you? Well, who's making the first round pick, Jake? Because we're you're, all you're making the first round pick. Oh, is it that, ladies first? It is ladies first. So, <laughs> so they already the know where I would go, but, and I'll slow this down in case you want to make a pick. But just be the Rams for a second. Yeah. Are there players that you're looking at realistically? We're not talking like, I'll take Caleb Williams. Like, no. But are there players realistically you're looking at that you're like, I could see the Rams genuinely trading up for first part of that question. And the second part is, are there any players that you yourself would want the Rams to trade up for? Well, like... I'm not sure because I feel like if there was a scenario where Joe Alt fell past eight, could I see, I do think it's more, I think it's unlikely that the Rams trade up. I would love for them to trade up for Joe Alt. Mm -hmm. Even if they were to trade up, I wouldn't want them to trade up that far for like Fuwaga. But if they wanted to jump from like 19 to 13 or something that, you know, wouldn't cost as much as trading up into the top 10 for like a Fuwaga or Fashanu, anything like that, I wouldn't be upset about it. But it's interesting because there really isn't a player in my mind that I want to just trade a 2025 first for off the bat. I know like a lot of Rams fans are like Rome out of Washington. You know what I mean? Like they want 
I know, like, but I, I just don't, I don't see that happening because I think he's going to go top seven and I don't foresee the Rams trading into the top seven for him. I just don't. I'm not saying they won't, but if we're doing this mock draft, I don't know that I would trade up for him. I mean, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the way I see it is this draft doesn't have a ton of depth, right? Like linebacker position after round three, good luck. Um, a lot of these positions will have that issue. Wide receiver is absolutely loaded. So I can understand maybe that is like, why would you go and get Odunze if you right. could get like Brian Thomas Jr. just staying in 19? Um, mm -hmm. Odunze is a Devontae Adams clone. And when you look at going out and getting somebody like him or Alt or Fashionu or even Fuaga, if he was willing to play left tackle because they like him, I just don't know if he's willing to play left tackle. If you're going out and getting one of those guys, you're getting a blue chip prospect. Those guys, like people don't understand Eric Fisher and Luke Jokel. Remember that draft that bored the crap out of people? They're like back to back offensive linemen at one and two. Those weren't blue chip prospects. Those were team needs, right? And we talk about it when the Rams, you know, this is a bitter, this is bitter Jake talking. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Notice every, and Alexis, you can attest to this. You've been a fan of the Rams for a long time. Mm -hmm. Every time the Rams need a legitimate left tackle of the future, it's Jason Smith. It's somebody that's not a blue chip prospect. It's somebody that's like, oh yeah, it's the best available. But when they don't need one or say they're not in position to grab one, you have a draft where Joe Alt comes out and Olu Fashanu and Fuaga. And it's like, Really? Really? Yeah. So it, like, uh, it's frustrating. That's why, it, for me personally, if I'm trading up, it's going to be probably be for a left tackle. I'm not trading up for a wide receiver for the reasons that you said. I, I just don't think that that's like a big enough need for the Rams to go ahead and do that. Um, the edge is a big, you know, need for for us I do get of... the rationale trading up for a receiver if you believe that he's the real deal he's going to grow with Puka and there's there's some concern and because they didn't um you know restructure Cooper Cup this offseason it makes it more likely he could be traded next year on top of that only Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua are signed to the roster past this year so that's something to keep in mind a lot of contract guys, uh, contract your guys on the roster. So I get that. I also get your point. But also, the, but it's the trading up more. So when you've got, I think mm -hmm. like Brian Thomas, you know, Keon Coleman, um, although I think he's falling, um, Xavier Worthy even, I think those guys will be there at 19. Yeah. So I guess it just depends on which prospect you like more. But for terms of our mock draft, let's say... If any of those three left tackles we mentioned are tackles, because I don't know that, like you said, Fuaga's... The Bears just picked Caleb Williams. Uh, thoughts? Shocking. <laughs> wow, that, that just throws off the momentum of our entire draft. Drake um, May to Washington. I've seen okay. Jaden Daniels, so... That's who I think Washington will take. Ooh! Spoiler. Patriots took Marvin Harrison Jr. So now... That could happen. What is Arizona going to do? Are they going to trade out of this thing? We'll see. And they're going to take neighbors. They took Malik neighbors. And yeah. I think the Chargers now, they took Romo Dunze. Yeah, that's... And the Giants took Joe Walt. Okay. All right. Titans. Titans took Brock Bowers. The Falcons took Quinion Mitchell. Bears took Dallas Turner. You want me to keep going? Well, in my mind, I'm going through prospects at 19 because I'm thinking like Nate Wiggins out of Clemson. I would take him at 19. I would take Latu. I would take Chop Robinson. Um, I would have taken Mitchell, but I kind of felt like he wouldn't fall. So, yeah, you can keep going. Mitchell actually just met with the Falcons, so I found that kind of funny. The <laughs> Jets are taking Fuaga. The Vikings get Jaden Daniels at 11. So let's talk about this. I don't think the Rams are going to draft a quarterback, but if Jaden mm -hmm. Daniels fell that far down the board, do you think they'd be interested? No. 
Okay. I don't I don't buy any of the Rams taking a quarterback. I also I don't think, think Jane Daniels is falling that far down the board. No, I think he's going second overall. Yeah, I do too. I, I, don't, I don't know what that just happened, but Denver's on the clock here. Would be shocked if they don't take uh, McCarthy, which they did. Mm-hmm. Raiders took Fatanu. So Olu Fashionu is still there. So at where are we at? Pick 14. And you did mention you could see them okay. training up let's, like let's that. See. Offer can you, and I don't have the similar in front of me. You're the one running it. Mm-hmm. If we offer to trade, could we somehow move up four spots without giving up a first? So you would move up to 14 from 19. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't have to give up a first. So probably right. in that case, pick 99, you might be able to get away with. So the are you willing to, to give away the Raheem Morris compensatory pick to move up to 14? Yes. Okay, so let's see it. Okay, they accepted it. So Alexis has wheeled mm-hmm. and dealed here, or dealt, yes, good I lord. Um, <laughs> dealed. Uh, that's going to be something in the comments. So the Rams are on the clock at pick 14, and Fashion U is there. You got Latu, you got Newton. Well, you wouldn't have traded up for Newton because he probably would have fallen. So are you picking Fashion U? So it would be between Fashion U and Latu because here's the thing. I don't think Latu will be there at 19 either. I don't. No. So Seattle might pick him I, at 16. So you did jump Seattle and Fatanu, well, who they're expected, like people think he's going to go to the Seahawks, went off the board at 13. Yeah, because my initial reasoning for trading up here is I wanted Fash or not, F- yeah, Fashanu, left tackle. But then I'm also thinking about Latu. I'm just trying to think realistically. I think it's more likely the Rams trade up for Latu than they do Fashanu. I like. I that. actually disagree with you. you if disagree? they trade up like that, yeah, if they trade up like that, they're doing that based on a reaction to what has happened. If I take Fashanu here. Mm-hmm. the comments on this episode are going to be astronomically negative because what do you want to do? Cause the, you're the GM. If uh, I think, I think looking at, I think I'm taking law too. And here's why. Okay. Because oh, Jared verse is also there. Is law too ahead of him on your oh, board. You know what? Verse is ahead of law too for me. Personally. Okay. Yeah, so verse. So, so okay, I'll, your big I'll, three. That actually, I forgot to mention because I might as well list the other ones. Okay. Newton, uh, mm-hmm. Cooper DeGene. I'm not as high on as other people. Latu, Byron Murphy, Terion Arnold. I was surprised he fell this far. Jared Verse, Olu Fashanu. After that, most yeah, there'd be most guys would be there at 19. So. You'd probably be trading up for Law 2 versus or Fashanu at this point. I'm going versus or Law 2. If it's up to me, I mean, are we going, we're doing this off our big boards, right? Or are we trying to do what we think is the Rams? I mean, you're, if, you are the GM, so you are making your move. And I'll just, you know, my next pick will be based on what, whatever position you go with. Let's take Jared Verse. Okay. I know that just Jared crushed Verse played up. Uh, yeah, it did. It just crushed. I know all of you are so angry with me, but I'm just telling you, if Verse is there as opposed to Law 2 at any pick, I, th- I think that Verse is getting taken. So the Rams oh, trade up man, for Jared that... Verse across yeah. from... Well, and, and so here's the thing. This is the, the scouting report for Verse. Um, you're getting a 6'4", 260-pounder that is 23 years old, so he is a little bit older, but you do have a 26-year-old Byron Young. Keep in mind, he's going in his second year. Older guy. Pass mm-hmm. first win rate was 21.8% this year. You're getting, a, I mean, elite pass rush grade according to PFF. I think he's a better run defender than giving credit for. And you don't have that neck, you know, history, the injury history that I think a lot of teams are going to be 
careful with. Personally, I like Lot 2 more than Verse. Um, really? Yes. And it's sad to say because Verse is, played football in my backyard. Not literally, but he was at UAlbany and then transferred. Um, with that said, I like them all more than Dallas Turner. I don't get the Dallas Turner hype. I've said it over and over again. I don't know why that guy has so much hype. He's a great athlete. Well, guess what? So is Chop Robinson. He's better. So, yeah. I have Jared Verse as my number one edge in the class. I think that all the... There's three He's guys number that are three close. for me right now. So, I just... I feel like if if we're doing this and staying true to ourselves, I'm taking Jared Verse if he's there over Law 2. I know that everyone's going to be really upset about that but guess what guys in real life i think verse is going higher so yeah he if, he very well yeah, could so yeah all right so for the next picks i guess we'll just let's maybe it'll take us forever if we read them out yeah so um but if you want to maybe just say who goes in the next couple of picks just so lots you ended up going to the seahawks yeah. Oh God. Everyone hates me so much. I can feel the furious typing right now about what just And Fashanu happened. fell to 19. Ain't no way. I don't buy that. So some of these mock drafts again, like the simulation's pretty good, but do you get some you weird ones? Know. You get some yeah, weird you get ones. Some weird plays. Okay. So, okay. At this point, we just watched Fashanu, Latham, Newton, Wiggins, Mims, Barton, Brian Thomas Jr., Kool Aid, McKinstry go off the board in the first 26. Well, yeah, now we're to pick 27. And the thing is, I'm actually considering trading back and, and buying a pick, so to speak, in the first round. Reason the rationale behind this is there's a fifth year option in play here, right? Mm -hmm. the, the problem is. I can't see the board. <laughs> so I can't really tell who's available. Uh, so I think I'm just going to wait for my pick at 52, to be honest with you, because I, I don't want to just trade up for the yeah. sake of trading up. But if I were to do that, I, well, let's see if they would accept it. The Bills. All right. All right, the Bills might actually accept this, Alexis. I'm going to do something don't crazy. don't you think that now that they've traded Diggs, they're not... You don't think they're staying in the first to pick? I mean, it's your pick. Well, I'm thinking, unfortunately, this is going to be kind of a sad thing to say. It's going to be a first-round pick. And... First-round pick in 2-2 two -two Atwell for pick 28. One tw uh... 28, 128, and 133. Yeah. All so right. they get a 2025 first rounder and 2 2 Atwell. In, in, in return, Rams get 28th overall, 128, and 133. And according to this simulator, like we're golden. So we'll see. I'm going to offer the trade. Ready? Let's see. We're golden. Pick 28. There we go. All right, make a pick to bring bring everyone back in the episode that is wanting to dip after my verse ver, over law two pick. You ready? How pissed people kidding. are gonna get when I make this pick? Because oh you just right. you have no idea what I'm about to do. And I feel like you're gonna take a receiver. You honestly couldn't even guess what I'm trying to do right now. We're gonna double dip on edge, baby. I just got chop Robinson. That's right. So basically, really? the the rationale behind this, huh. you get two edge defenders, Verse and okay. Robinson, on a fifth-year option. Robinson is not as NFL-ready, so to speak, as Verse. He's 21 years old, though. Remember I said, Byron. there's a reason why I said it. Byron Young is 26 as of right now, going into his second year. So I see the rationale behind it because Byron Young was drafted in the third round. I don't think he's brought back. 27 in year three, 28 in year four, and then year five when you have to sign him, he's going to be 29. See what I'm saying? So, Right, but okay. No, you I, got, okay. But also, with no Aaron Donald, you're going to have to be creative with this, right? Mm -hmm. So the creativity here is you go out 
you spend a 2025 first round pick to go out and get a guy with elite traits in Chop Robinson. In this scenario, I don't know if he'll fall this far. But you go out, you get Robinson, and you got Verse, and you have Byron Young, and you have Hoyt, and you have Hampton, and you have O'Shawn Mathis. You're good. All of a sudden, this edge room is really good. And guess what? Chop Robinson now, because Verse would start day one, I would imagine, Chop Robinson is going to come off the bench with that elite athleticism, the elite first step quickness, and he is going to be your situational pass rusher that you develop into a superstar. So Chop has virtually no um, pressure on him because of the way we decided to do this. So Ram show... They also showed this offseason, they did an unprecedented thing this offseason. They signed all these guys. We've never seen that from the Rams. We've also never seen the Rams be active at trading up like this in the first round. Twice. Trading into the first round. So the Bills get 2-2 out well. They have their field stretcher there. They feel good about him. Um, you know, he's on a one-year deal. They'll also find a receiver, really good receiver class but they couldn't help the idea of getting another first rounder in 2025. Plus think about it. Brandon Bean is not in good place financially. So it helps them because it actually, by taking a 2024 first round pick off of their thing, that's a guy off their, you know, their, their payroll, essentially their salary cap goes down with the draft reserves. But with chop Robinson, this is something at a 20.9 pass rush win rate. You know, I think he's better than giving credit for in the run game. And he's got the best first step in the draft. So that's my rationale behind that. Well, there you go, guys. We just took two edge edge defenders uh, in the first. He's my number one edge defender, by the way, in the draft. So, Yeah, so you got your number one guy. I got mine. And, uh, yeah, let's go to the second round. We still have our second round pick still, right? Yeah. I wasn't going to put you in the bad spot. <laughs> So yeah, we'll we'll hurry this thing up here. I was going slow in the first round because I really felt like I wanted to trade up. And when I saw that Chop was mm -hmm. still there, I was like, we're trading up. So this is interesting. You oh, yeah, have you are on uh at pick 52. Okay. I would assume edge is off the board. <laughs> so yeah. The best player available, they say, is Jatavian Sanders, tight end. Uh, Rook or Horror Horro. I don't even know how to say his name, but I'm a big fan of Rook. I just call him Rook uh, out of Clemson, interior defensive lineman. Keon Coleman, Jonathan Brooks, the running back out of Texas. Another Kyron, Kyron Amagaji, um, the tackle from Yale. Marshawn Neeland, edge from Western Michigan. Jalen Polk. Washington wide receiver, Chris Jenkins, defensive interior lineman, Jaden Hicks, uh, safety from Washington State, Edgerin Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M, Xavier Leggett, wide receiver, South Carolina. Um, you want me to keep corner? reading? Well, who's at corner? Is uh, Mike Sanders still still there? Uh, I think Sanders still went. Yeah, it would be the best available would be Kyrie Jackson, which is a little early. For him yeah. and Max Melton. Um, Those are too early for me. Let's, okay. Um, you got your pick of the litter, a wide receiver, though. Good Lord. Well, yeah, I was going to say Coleman is really intriguing for me right there. Who else is at receiver? Available? So I'll, I'll just put receiver filter. Um, wide receiver currently, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, Xavier Leggett, Jalen McMillan, Xavier Worthy, Javon Baker, Devontez Walker, Johnny Wilson. Okay, now we're a little bit far, but you know what? Yeah. I'm going Xavier Worthy. Oh my God. So you traded 2 2 Atwell to get a similar style as 2 2 Atwell I, I at mean, 52, again, I, where they drafted 2 2 Atwell. But I think Worthy is, an, in my not to be disrespectful, an upgrade. If you no, I don't that. think it's disrespectful. I mean, the the fastest what forty time at mm -hmm. the combine in how long? Yeah, 
you know, just a good, and I think that he's a good receiver too. I mean, I, I think out of, you know, in the receiving class, I won't say he's the best ball skills, but he's good enough. I mean, the dude is just like, gives you so many options. And I think that that's, again, we traded 2-2 out well in this scenario. There's nobody else on the Rams roster that's going to do what Xavier Worthy does. Um, also, Worthy 6-1. Like, he's not, he's not yeah. like small, you know, um, and he's not even 21 yet. He'll be 21 soon, but he's not just like a speed guy. Like he's got multiple gears. Um, he's got good ball skills too. That's what like people I think see him and are like, Oh, fast, which is well, he's a good he route runner fast. too. Yeah. He's got, yeah. I think he's got a more complete skill set. He can win on the outside and on the inside. Um, now let me just say, I think Tutu Atwell just hasn't gotten the opportunity to do what he can do, but I get what you're saying. Um, and he does have size limitations. I mean, to be fair, I'm not a big like, oh, size is all that matters. But when you look at Worthy, I mean, yeah, now you're talking about a guy that has speed that no one else in the league has. I mean, this is mm -hmm. like Tyree kill level, you know? So yeah, I, I could see the Rams actually doing that. Plus the Texas connection with Les Snead's uh, son being at Texas. I could definitely see that. And it almost seems like Oh, he's automatically going to go in the first round. Maybe he doesn't. You know, there's a lot of guys well, that have emerged, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't go. I, I do think he's going to go in the first round, but for the sake of how this is shaking out, um, yeah, exactly. I think it's kind of a no-brainer to take him there. Uh, looking at this Rams team, so I'm excited about that pick. If if it does, yeah. Yeah, I think so. We took two edge defenders. So that, and really, I, I can't stress enough to me, that was a best player available pick with a twist of need with your pick at 14. And then I went best player available and I justified the need. But to me, Chop Robinson at pick 28 was by far. Far and away, I think he's a top 15 talent in this draft. Far and away made too much sense. So I, I decided to be aggressive there. Then you get Xavier Worthy, who could very well go in the first round. So we're cooking early on. A lot of athleticism cooking. Yes, we are. So you got two edge defenders and a wide receiver. I'm on the clock here. I got Andrew Phillips, you know, available. Jamari Thrash, uh, Bucky Irving, Malachi Corley. Trey Benson, Cameron Kinchins. You know, Alexis, I'm not loving this group. So I'm actually going to trade down uh, here, which is what I think the Rams would do. Um, so let's see what we have here. Offers. <clears throat> we got the Cleveland Browns. They want to trade down. We got, you know, let's trade. We'll trade back a little bit. Just give us a, you know, kind of a reset. So... We want to stay picking on the same day. I'm going to trade right. down 15 spots with Washington. So what that does is by trading down with Washington, they're actually going to give us 139 and, and 222 to move up 17 spots. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, not shabby. So there we go. That is done. People look at them and be like, that's way too far. I didn't like the the players available. I, I didn't dislike a no. ton of them, but I'd rather get another pick here. And plus, we don't have a fourth round pick. Now we got because, two. Yep. Because of the trade earlier. So, you know, wheeling and dealing here. Mm -hmm. So now at this spot here, um, I think there there's a few guys that I really like here. So we, ha we have wide receiver. We have edge. So let's right. filter out some positions here. We're going to put in tackle since we haven't addressed tackle yet. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put in interior offensive line, put in cornerback, safety, interior defensive line, and we'll say linebacker there. I think a running back too. Yeah. I'm not going to take a quarterback. I've already said why, but anyway... So, with that said, 
This is this is interesting because I see Cooper Beebe's available here. I see Cam Hart from Notre Dame, who I like. Um, he's got good size, six two corner. So I'm looking at him, Kamal Haddon out of Tennessee, Kalen Carson out of Wake Forest. So there are definitely some guys. There's some good corners. I think that I'm going to go. Here's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Makai Wingo out of LSU. He's got this explosive rating, this explosive grade that's on the level of what Aaron Donald had coming out of pit. And so this is a, and for everyone, say his position. This is an interior defensive yeah. lineman. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to go with Makai Wingo here. I think he'll probably go a little bit higher, but he's available here. So I'm going to get him at pick 100, Alexis, leaving you with a pick in the 120s here. And you could have uh, a decent amount of guys available. Ooh, yeah, I like that pick, by the way, that you just made. I, I think he will go higher, but I mean, we're getting some gems. Ooh, you're this is gonna be tough for you. So there's some good there's some good players here. Cooper Beebe, Malik Washington, mm-hmm. Kamal Haddon, Muhammad Kamara, Ben Sinat, Chow Smith Wade, Braylon Allen, uh Kalen Carson, Isaac Guerinendo Guerendo. Cedric Gray, Will Shipley, Josh Newton, Isaiah Adams, Kalen King. Uh, you want me to keep going? No, it's okay. so this is the, we're in the fourth round still, right? Yeah, one twenty eight. Because we tri- yeah, okay. Um, is Audrey Gustame there? Probably I think he not. just went. He just yeah. went. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, let's look at corners. Okay, so corner. Because I want, yeah, corners and safeties. Corners and safeties. Okay. Yeah. So Haddon, Chow Smith Wade, Kalen Carson, Josh Newton, Kalen King, Bo Braid, Malik Mustafa, who's, you know, they're listing him around a fifth rounder. It's probably where you'd be able to get him. Dwight McLaughlin, James Williams. Yeah, these are these are guys down here. So, so I'm gonna go, I am gonna go wake. I'm going to go Kalen Carson. Okay. I like him at that spot. I like the value there. I like Kalen Carson. Um, Zone heavy corner. That's okay. He's, he's, and this is a little later actually than I've been seeing him go as of late, but just, you know, in the draft, you never know. People can just kind of slide around. This is the fourth round. This is the beginning of day three. I think this is a good pick. Um, I like Haddon out of Tennessee too. But I think out of all those guys, if I had to take one, I, I think Carson's the best pick. And I also think with this Rams secondary, got some new faces, but I'd also like to beef it up a little um, in the draft. So I, I definitely am looking, you know, when I'm doing these mocks at adding a corner between rounds two and four, honestly. If Mike Sanders still would have been there in the second, uh, that would have been where I wanted to go, but... I hear you. No, that's good point. Good point there. Um, so now at pick one thirty three, the fifth. Uh, still right. the fourth. Oh, still the fourth. You're right. So this is the pick we got from Buffalo. You had the pick mm-hmm. we also got from Buffalo, but right. we got via. I don't know. We got via another trade. I think Washington had Buffalo's pick for whatever reason. So uh, Christian Jones, tackle Texas. Uh, Braylon Allen, running back Wisconsin. Will Shipley, running back Clemson. Isaac Guarendo, running back Louisville. Satawa Lomea from Utah. Isaiah Adams from Illinois. Dylan Laub from New Hampshire. Javon Foster from Mizzou. So I'm looking at this and there's not a ton of guys I love here, but there are a couple that I love and it's going to be hard to decide because I love Javon Foster. I think he's excellent in pass protection, but I want to get Kyron Williams a running back in this room. That'll take the load off him, but we'll also add something that's not currently on the roster. 
And the only guy that that would even fit that description of is Braylon Allen. When I look at Braylon Allen at Wisconsin, this is somebody who's decently elusive considering he's six foot two, 245 pounds. I think he's somebody who has an underrated uh, amount of home run speed. And he's somebody that will work in a gap scheme. So I think yards after contact won't be an issue, but yards before contact won't be an issue. I think he's somebody that has good vision. He's always somebody that really stands out to me. Um, I really like him. There are other people that don't. He's 20 years old. If, say, the worst comes to worst and Kyron doesn't want to re-sign with the Rams for whatever reason, you have 20-year-old... I know, you just died a little bit inside. But My you have 20-year-old Braylon Allen. 20 years old. He'll be 24 at the end of his deal. Uh, so I'm going to go with Braylon Allen here at 133. It's a good pick. Like I, I think that he's probably going to go... I mean, he could go slightly higher than that. So He could. Well, I think he does. Um, oh, just kidding. Washington's pick was 139. So you have a fifth round pick here. Okay. Uh, we'll take running back out of here. Um, right. You're, are you interested in, in any quarterback or should I just leave him out? Not in the fifth. Okay. So tight end. Are you interested in any tight ends? No. I mean, who? you can read who's there. I just feel like at the moment, not really. Yeah, because I'm thinking of just like filtering them out. You picked a corner, so I'll take the corner off the list. Or do you want the corner to stay on the list? I guess um, just keep the corner keep on there. Yeah. Safety, mm-hmm. interior D line. We took Makai Wingo. Would you draft another? Nah, not in the fifth, no. Okay. Um. Offensive line, but keep both of them. The linebacker? Yes. And then kicker, I also put in there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. This is what you have here at pick 139. You got Cedric Gray, Josh Newton, Satawa Lomea, the tackle from Utah, uh, Illinois tackle Isaiah Adams, cornerback Kalen King, and tight end Theo Johnson, both from Penn State, Michael Barrett, linebacker, Michigan, Dalen Holker, tight end, Colorado State, Zach Zinter, Guard, Michigan, J.D. Bertrand, Notre Dame linebacker, Bo Braid, safety, Malik Mustafa, safety, Wake Forest, Drake Nugent, center, Michigan, Javon Foster, tackle, Mizzou. You want me to keep going? You said Foster's still there? Foster's still there. Okay, cut out. Okay. Yeah, I'm taking Javon Foster. Perfect. That that hurts me because I want to take Malik Mustafa out of Wake. But I feel like he might still be there as we get. We're going to see. We got back to back, by the way. So, yeah. Oh, that's right. So, well, we'll see what you do. But, yeah, I think Javon Foster. I like addressing offensive line here. I I honestly would like to address offensive line earlier, but just the way that this particular mock has shaken out. I just don't think that there was anybody – I wanted to bite on that early, but yeah, I mean, I think this is great value for Foster. And like you said, he's just great. He's great. He's got great film. If anyone listening to this has watched it, um, he's fun to watch. No, I definitely agree with you there. Um, Where is. Okay. So pick 154 here, probably not going wide receiver. Theo Johnson, really good athlete, can block. Definitely somebody that I'm looking at, 6'6", 264. At the same time, I don't know if I want to go tight end because of just what they were able to do going out and getting Davis Allen last year. One of my guys, they haven't given up on Tyler Higby and they drafted our guy, Colby Parkinson, or they they signed him. Um, they didn't draft him. They should have. Uh, I'm going to go with my old reliable here, who's going to go probably way higher. He's in my opinion, and I draft him earlier, but I feel like he's the best sleeper corner in this draft. It's Dwight McLaughlin out of Arkansas, a 6'2", 188, great in zone coverage, um, only allowed a 48% completion percentage when targeted. 
this is somebody that really, I think, is the total package. And for whatever reason, people aren't talking about him. So I'm going to go out and get McLaughlin here to add, you know, with Kalen Carson, to add with, you know, Tredavious White is on a one-year deal. Um, Darius Williams is on technically a year-by-year deal because the Rams have so much flexibility in that contract. They can move on from him after one year if it doesn't work out. So Dwight McLaughlin, welcome to the Rams. Pick 155, Alexis. And uh, not to influence a certain pick, but Mustafa Mm. is there still. Well, no need to influence me over here. That's who I'm taking. (laughs) So that's three. That's who I want to take. That's three Wake Forest uh, Demon Deacons yep. on the Rams' defense. Exactly. And listen, Mustafa, Jake, and I obviously like a lot. He's been on our show. But that is not just the reason we like him. He is a very hard-hitting safety who is very fun to watch. We talk about the addition of Cameron Curl, right, on this uh, secondary and just the type of player he is and just again just kind of that violent type of safety Mustafa is very similar um, in his playing style very fun to watch very efficient um, I believe was actually captain his senior year Jake I don't remember we I should remember that I think um, he might have been he's got great yeah. range that's something yeah. that really just stands out to me so I agree. I mean, he's just again. If you guys have haven't watched any tapes um, of these guys, particularly tape of Mustafa, you'll see why I'm taking him here. But yeah, him and Kalen Carson. You know, I love my reunions. Yes, I I do, I do. know that. I, I love it when players are drafted to the same team because I like the idea that you know they can like reunite and have a friend in the locker room already whatever but that's not that's not why i'm taking malik but that's the pick guys so with that said i'm going to get another guy we interviewed because i can't believe he's still here i'm gonna go t- uh, tanner bordellini here can play Ooh. multiple positions on the offensive line and you added javon foster earlier so mm-hmm. people are going to look at javon foster and see okay we addressed the tackle position in the fifth round. That's unserious. Why didn't we draft it earlier? This is a really good tackle class at the top. Well, Foster, what people don't realize, had an elite zone blocking grade and he had a really good gap blocking grade. He's a great run blocker, but he's a great pass protector. He only gave up one sack this past year. So also, look at where Alec Jackson came from. Hint, hint, he wasn't drafted. Okay. So they can they can really develop these guys. I love the the coaching staff that they have in the offensive line. So I think they're going to get the most out of Javon Foster. I think it's a great fit. I think he is kind of if you're looking for a sleeper tackle to like tell your friends about and look smart and like just completely blow their minds, Javon Foster because people won't see it coming when he ends up being a really good tackle. Kind of the same thing here in the rationale behind drafting a guy like Tanner Bordellini that has that versatility, can play all over the line, um, on the offensive line. The Rams don't have a backup center right now. So he will be their backup center, but he's also going to be cross-trained to be even better at those other positions that he can play. So Bordellini is somebody that is great in pass pro, could be better in the run game, but I do like him still in the run game. Uh, they love their Wisconsin guys. I'm going to go with Tanner Bordellini here at pick 196. Love it. Great, great guy. Great depth guy. Like we're working in unison pretty well. I think, I think we're cooking. I mean, we'll see the final product, but if if people, if people can forgive me for the Jared verse pick, I mean, this has been pretty good. Probably not. There'll be a bunch of people that hold that against you the entire time. Yeah, and then when the Rams inevitably do draft lot two, they're gonna be like, pretend Told you. that I like, they're, yeah, they're gonna say I don't like him or something, which is just probably, worse, but whatever. Not everybody though, so it's not all of you guys, right? But right, it is fair to mention though, like you just said though, it was like you know, come on. I just yeah. Right, so next, so with that said, pick. we got Frank Gore Jr. Well, you're not gonna go running back, but Caden Wallace. uh, Tackle Penn State, Tyron Hopper, 
uh, linebacker Mizzou, mm. Omar Brown, safety Nebraska, Johnny Dixon, cornerback Penn State, David White Jr., wide receiver Western Carolina, Andrew Coker, tackle TCU, um, Jalen Ford, linebacker Texas, Josh Wallace, cornerback Michigan, Daquan Hardy, cornerback Penn State. Miles Harden, cornerback South Dakota. Brandon I... Coleman, tackle TCU. CJ Hansen, guard Holy Cross. Any of these sticking out to you? I'm going linebacker Tyron Hopper out of Mizzou. Okay. Hopper, like... uh, w- what does he bring to the table for you? Well, if, so starting with position wise, I like the idea of taking. be opposed to taking a linebacker higher uh i just think you know we need somebody next to ernest jones um i do think that we will end up keeping ernest jones but you know there's some speculation that you know will the rams pay him will they not whatever so i and i think hopper he might be a little raw to be like a starting linebacker right now in the nfl but i just i like him as like a prospect he just talk about hard-hitting guys what was that noise what oh did you not hear that i don't know what you clicked something on the thing and i just heard like a very loud buzz oh my phone no (laughs) my phone is vibrating like because somebody was just calling me that's probably what you were hearing yeah Yeah. um okay anyways anyways i just like hopper here i like the uh i i was thinking about taking a linebacker anyway um but i really like him as a prospect i think he could go higher and yeah, I mean, just a good good depth piece, somebody that you can develop. He had kind of a down year. Uh, 2022, though, I think is what's going to get him drafted because he had a really right. good 2022 season. It, I struggle with the missed tackle rate, um, but good size, 6'2", 221. And it's something that I could definitely see them doing, grabbing a linebacker, fifth, sixth round. Uh, you grab him in the sixth here. So we have another pick here at 213. And I like the idea of just just completely building up that offensive line. I think we've done a nice job adding two guys there. Um, But in my opinion, at this point, I want to go best player available. And I think right now, the best player available in my estimation is going with another linebacker and Jalen Ford out of Texas. I think Ford is outstanding against the run. Missed tackle rate is a lot better than Hopper, but you know, as far as coverage, I think they're about the same. So I like the idea of going out and getting Jalen Ford, letting him duke it out in uh, camp. May the best man win. Let's go and uh, help that Rams team out. Now you got to pick at two seventeen. So we have tons of round six picks. Oh, I feel like this is the Rams all the time. So we right. picked one, two, three. Theories. Yeah, we picked four sixth rounders. The Rams have done that before. Uh, so who do you got here at 217? You got Omar Brown, safety out of Nebraska. Josh Wallace, cornerback, Michigan. Daquan Hardy, cornerback, Penn State. Don't forget, obviously, not forcing you to pick one, but we do also need a kicker. Uh, Jordan Whittington, wide receiver, Texas. Dominic Lovett, wide receiver, Georgia. Miles Harding, cornerback, South Dakota. Uh, Dylan McMahon, center, North Carolina State. Trente Jones, uh, tackle, Michigan. Trey Taylor, Air Force safety. Marcellus mm-hmm. Dial. These guys weren't even here the last time we were. Anyway, who was uh? Can you who are the best receivers available right now? I'm just curious. The best receivers. So Whittington out of Texas. Uh, Dominic Lovett out of Georgia. Zachary Franklin out of Mississippi. Uh, Ole Miss, Hayden Hatton out of Idaho, and Ledatric Griffin from Mississippi State. It's not a ton there. No. Um, uh, Brandon Coleman's still there. I did notice that. I was just thinking. I was just thinking about taking oh, another tight end. Are you interested at all? I mean, you could read it. Go ahead and read them. 
Yeah, I mean, there's not a ton, but I like Tanner McLaughlin out of Arizona. I like, the, I kind of like the Brandon Coleman pick. I mm-hmm. like the depth. At the same time, I'm almost like, I don't love any, other than Coleman, I don't know that I love anybody that you read, and I don't know that I'm super inclined to take offensive line right here. So that's what I'm trying to debate on. Um, and there's not like a cornerback. Uh, there's not a quarterback worth, worth yeah, taking. Yeah, there's just not. I'll say this. If I were making a selection here, I'd probably take Josh Wallace because I think he'd be the best fit for what they do on defense. Great zone corner, great run defensive guy. Um, We've taken two corners. And I also am not super familiar with Josh Wallace, I'll be honest. So I don't want to like... Oh, I'm not trying to influence you. But also the ta- um, the kicker as well. I forgot to... All of them are still yeah. available. All of them? So, do yeah. Do they have... I'm interested. Do They They have Cameron Little listed at... They have him listed as the this? lowest kicker. Wait, really? hmm Who do they have as one? Cardi? Uh, Mevis. Interesting. I, I actually, have Cardi I as actually, one. I have Cardi as one as well, but I do really like Mevis. Um, I think he's fun to watch kick because he doesn't look like a kicker. <laughs> like so, he's like thick with two C's. Oh my, I knew that was episode. coming. Yeah. And like, he's just really fun to watch. I don't know that I want to take a kicker here. There are two more picks uh, after this one. So you will wrap it up a pick. 254 you know what let's take brandon coleman okay let's take it let's take a guard i don't think it ever hurts to have i mean i think with what the rams are trying to do right now i think depth is everything especially in the offensive line and i like brandon a lot as a prospect and i think that again you know you you have jonah jackson or kevin dotson go down I mean, Bordellini can play guard, but what if what if a guard and our center goes down? So why not? I know that Logan Bruss is still in the picture, but let's just take Brandon Coleman. It doesn't hurt, and you get the potential of a really good guard. And I get to pick the kicker, and I'll take Cardi. <laughs> Cardi B. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Yeah. I, well, it had to happen. Um, so mm-hmm. I, backstory, Alexis, I did a mock draft on the channel and I forgot the kicker, not once, but twice. <laughs> so people wanted to kill me and I just hopefully changed my fortunes there by picking Cardi B at a uh, pick 2022, uh, 222. Good Lord. Okay. Final pick here. Alexis is on the clock for the Rams. 254. And then we'll go over our draft class of 2024. I gave you a lot of freedom now. You can go with a, anything. you know, like Free literally fall. anything. I mean, you could you could even get Sam Hartman. I mean, <laughs> could you imagine? People would kill me. Um, I mean, it's a seventh rounder. If they're killing you for that, psh. I think Josh Proctor's who I would pick here. But you know, anyway, they're okay. Carter. Carter Bradley, quarterback, South Alabama. Jaden Sheridan, uh, running back, Monmouth. Andrew Rame, uh, center, Oklahoma. Nathaniel Watson, linebacker, Mississippi State. Jordan McGee, linebacker, Temple. J.J. Weaver, edge defender, Kentucky. Jaden Crumity, or Crumity, uh, defense lineman, Mississippi State. Has, uh, has Jalen Coker been drafted yet? I don't even think they have him like in this. I thought you read his name earlier, which is why I no Andrew Coker, the tackle for oh, right, uh, right, TCU. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, they have Joshua Cephas. Probably. Uh, he's gone. Okay. Um, because I'm kind of thinking receiver. So I to be fair, Coker would have gone earlier. I think he might even go in the I third think round. Jalen. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm. I think he's. I mean, I think Steve not, Smith I, doing that whole bit on him. I think yeah. he clearly has some some eyes on that guy. Who, who is available at receiver? Uh, uh, right here? There's like nothing. Hayden Hatton okay. and Ladera, Ladatric Griffin. Okay. 
What about um, uh, where? You said Josh Proctor is still available. Yes. That seems like such a Rams pick. Yeah. He kind of reminds Ohio me State of uh, yeah Ohio State. He actually reminds me of Jordan Fuller. That's I know. Me too. Let's just let's just take Josh Proctor. Why not? Six two two oh five, uh elite run defensive grade, good in coverage, forced incompletion rate is among the best in the league and the best in the country, twenty nine twenty one point nine percent. Josh Proctor, you are a Ram. Come on down. So let's see the draft grade. I'm sure they gave us a bad grade. Um Oh my god, they do this PFF mock draft assistant now. They literally bully you. So like they're bullying Alexis's pick. Um, you drafted Xavier Worthy, draft Rook or Horror Horror or Ho. I don't even know how to say his name. Is he's a better need? Like they flat out just told you you're wrong, but it's like, bro, what? Um, well, they're telling us so, that we're wrong when like their simulator has Xavier Worthy available at. So it's like I okay, know. Well, your simulator. It's like, what am I supposed to do? Right. It's uh, it's just it's silly. So what was I our just, overall grade? So our overall grade was a B minus. I disagree. So this is this is how it works. So the Rams trade pick uh, nineteen and ninety nine to the Saints to move up five spots and take Jared Verse. They gave you an A minus. Uh, I unfortunately moved on from two two Atwell in this one. Sent him to Buffalo to replace Stefan Diggs. Obviously, they're going to do more than that. Um, and sent a first round pick in 2025 for the 28th pick in the draft and two picks in the fourth round. With those, I took Chop Robinson at 28. And then with those two picks, you took Kalen Carson and I took Braylon Allen. But let's stick in order here Jared versus Chop Robinson. Instantly, Chop Robinson gets a B plus. I don't know what they're talking about. Jared Verse got an A minus. Uh, Xavier Worthy got a C at fifty two, which I think you probably took the best player available at that point. So I can't hate you for it. They well, despise I, I, my Makai Wingo pick. Like, yeah, I'm looking at it. By the way, guys, if um, I'm looking at they're Jake's tar and grades. feathering me right now with that Makai Wingo pick, a D well, minus. So let's just recap, okay? So yeah. here's what they think. So Jared Verse, A minus, right? We took Jared Verse, pick 14 in the first round. Uh, we took Chop Robinson, 28th, B plus. Xavier Worthy, second round, pick 52, 52nd overall, C. Then we took defensive lineman uh, Wingo out of LSU, uh, pick, I don't have my glasses on, but. Third round pick 100 overall D minus. It just got worse. <laughs> but then the first... you you rounded it back out with the Kalen Carson pick because what were your thoughts? Because you never really gave your thoughts on it. I just did it. But moving down from 83 to 100, did you agree with that? Yes, because I didn't I didn't like who was available. Um I think kind of the same as you when the pick came up. It just wasn't none of the guys that you mentioned. I mean, Cameron Kitchens, maybe, but I don't think he was there. Oh, I thought that he, I thought he was one of the names you read, but there was, he might've been there for when you picked worthy, I think. Well, just the group that was there. I remember being Mm -hmm. like, yeah, well, if I'm remembering correctly, I feel like I just would have moved down. I think really what it comes down to is our draft is the embodiment of not wanting to settle. Mm -hmm. Like we could have settled. You could take any of those guys. Those guys, they could all end up being good, but I don't want to draft unless I know I want to draft this player. And I think that's the thing. I don't think any of our draft picks were like, I guess I'll take him. I mean, maybe at the end of the draft, but still think that this is a really good class. By the way, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen picks. So fourteen so picks last year, fifteen this year. They have eleven currently. I don't think this is out of the realm of possibility. So let's 
yeah so let's see so we got so wingo we just talked about the bad grade mm -hmm. um in the third next pick kaylin carson corner out of wake forest got a b fourth round pick yes yep and then I, I was gonna let you i didn't mean to like interrupt you can Braylon oh, allen got okay. a c plus which i i don't i don't know I don't agree with that because I think that's a really good value pick for him. I think he could go higher. So I don't know where the C plus comes from. You got a C minus for Javon Foster at one thirty nine. I just yeah, I don't get some of that. these don't make sense. No. A C for Malik Mustafa at one fifty five. You you skipped a pick. Oh, Dwight McLaughlin, a C plus. Yeah. I'm not even going to look at that. That's ridiculous. Uh, the reason I say it's ridiculous is I know how the algorithm works and everything, but based on where they ranked guys like Mustafa and McLaughlin, we picked them right where they would go based on their ranking. So it's not like anything crazy. Bordellini, yeah. a D plus. I'm sorry, no sixth round pick is getting a D plus grade if you're serious. They gave you an A minus for Tyron Hopper. I think that was the worst pick in the draft. Like in our draft. Like you know, they, they gave it an A minus because he's going to go higher. Probably, and I don't mean so to I, like crap on you or him. I think we drafted really well. That was the only pick where I was like, eh. you know what I mean? That that pick for you was <laughs> me when you took chop. It's funny because we did the opposite things. So you picked verse, and then I picked chop, and then you picked Hopper, and then I like protest picked like Jalen Ford. <laughs> But we worked in unison because, like I said, those guys can ballot out. Uh, yeah. Jalen Ford got us a B plus grade. Brandon Coleman got us a B grade. They gave Josh Cardi a C minus. Bruh, I picked a kicker in the seventh round. When do I pick a kicker then? And he's the best kicker in the draft. I just, I don't understand that. And then Josh Proctor got a C plus. But if you actually did like research and knew, Josh Proctor's probably not a seventh round talent. He's probably a fifth round talent, maybe even fourth. Um, are they gave us a B. Uh, I can't see if it's a minus or a B minus. It's a B minus. I we did better than that, but it doesn't I matter what say, we think. It matters what they think. I'm very curious to see in the comments section what our audience thinks to this. I actually kind of agree with the grade. I don't agree really? with the, I, I would say I give us a B. I don't agree with the individual grades because like they're giving Bordellini a D plus pick. Well, that's insane. In the, like, like, like the Cardi pick, the kicker, the uh, C minus in the seventh round. Cardi B. Um, Xavier Worthy at, in the second round, a steal at C for the Rams who we've talked about, like very, you know, real possibility for them to take a receiver so I, I don't agree with the individual grades if i'm being honest i just you know i'm not trying to knock pff but um nope knock them pretty bad but uh, drag uh, <laughs> uh but overall i give it a b just because i feel like more so not our picks i think that there were a couple picks we made that i don't know it wasn't my favorite mock draft. Like if you and I were to do this 10 times, I think this would hit probably in the middle for me. Like this isn't a horrible draft for me. It's not my favorite. I think it was solid. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm curious what everybody else thinks. If they could ever forgive us for Jared verse and then another edge in the first. Um, if they can, we'll see. I mean, it, it could happen. We'll have to do this again, like the day before the draft or something. It'd be and cool just... because our opinions are going to change about players. Yeah, I mean, um, I, so, I think so my my thought process is this: this is an A plus draft, considering that it's two people drafting every other pick. I mean, mm -hmm. that is like, you know what that's like. Here's your incoming the golf analogy, okay? I drive the golf ball and then you do the rest. So it's like, it's so disconnected to the game. Like you have to putt, you have to chip, you have, you know what I mean? Like if I'm just driving every time and then you're doing the rest or vice versa, you're driving and then I'm chipping and putting. 
It's a, you know what I mean? It's like the game is just kind of disconnected. So I thought we did a really nice job considering the fact we're going to have different opinions, which we do, you know, right. like we saw it firsthand, Tyron Hopper, Jalen Ford, Chop Robinson, Jared Verse. Well, and I'll be honest, I'll be completely honest. I did not hear you say Jalen Ford, which you definitely probably did, but I can't say that I might not have taken Hopper regardless. Gotcha. Um, I do really like Jalen Ford, but I just, in my mind, and I I'll be Hopper... honest, I would have taken a fashion new at pick 14. So that's where like you see, yeah. I mean like the disconnect there, which I thought we did pretty good. And here's the thing. You can disagree with a mock totally fine. But what you can't tell me is that the Rams get Jared verse chop Robinson, Xavier worthy, Makai Wingo, Kalen Carson, Braylon Allen, Javon Foster, Dwight McLaughlin, Malik Mustafa, Tanner Bordellini, Tyron Hopper, Jalen Ford, Brandon Coleman, Josh Ricardi, and Josh Proctor. They're not a better effing football team. That's those what you are can't all tell really me. Really good. Yeah. That's like when you think about that, that, those 15 guys are going to make this team much better. So that's, I guess, my thing. That's like my disconnect. I understand people are going to have, you know, issues with some parts of this draft. Uh, it, it is a controversial draft. Uh, Jared Verse was listed as the 17th overall player, according to PFF. We got him at 14. They list Chop Robinson at 43. We got him at 28. They list Xavier Worthy at 68. We got him at 52. They list Makai Wingo at 146. We got him at 100. They list Kalen Carson at 136. We got him at 28. 128. 128. Yeah. Um, they list Braylon Allen at 134. We got him at 133, and they gave us a C+. Plus. Yeah, they list Javon Foster at 168, which I think is ridiculous. We got him at 139. Dwight McLaughlin, 172. We got him at 154. Malik Mustafa, 165. We got him at 155. Tanner Bordellini at 212. We got him at 196. Hopper, 209. Got him at 209. Wow, that's that's wow. Maybe that's uh, the A minus. No, I think he's higher <laughs> oh, than 209. Yeah. But... Jalen Ford, 218. Uh, got him at 213. Brandon Coleman, 231, got him at 217. Joshua Cardi, 313, got him at 222. And Josh Proctor, 264, got him at 254. Overall, there was yeah, no we one did was well. egregiously off. Yeah. No. I mean, we weren't like reaching on anybody by any means. The one thing I think people are going to have a problem with is the wide receiver. Because I know that there are people that are anti wide receiver in the first three picks, but I think it's realistic. I think they're going to take a wide receiver, and I traded away two two out well, so there is a wide receiver spot based on well, that. And I've also said I do not want a receiver in like the second round. I think I've said that a couple of times. But again, Xavier Worthy will not be there. So in terms of our mock, if Xavier Worthy's there when the Rams pick. I would have no problem with them taking Xavier Worthy, if that makes sense. Like, I think in terms yeah. of of who was there, and then, again, you mentioned in order to get Chop, you traded 2-2 Atwell, so the, we have that opening. Um, and and I wasn't happy set. about it. I'm just reading the tea leaves, yeah. you know? Um, right. Last thing I'll say about this, I think... I don't want to say this is a hundred percent going to happen. It's, you know, hundred percent realistic. I do think this is somewhat realistic though. At the end of the day, these are scenarios and I understand people are going to say this is fantasy land and all this. It's really not. When you think about it, the Rams could absolutely trade up five spots. And then later on in the draft, be like, Hey, bills, do you really want to pay a, you know, a first round pick? That money when you're, you know, right now you're not doing so well financially. You just ate all that money to get rid of Stefan Diggs. Uh, do you mind taking our 2025 first round pick since we think it's going to be really good? And so we can go up and get this guy. I think it's entirely possible. Am I saying it'll happen? I'm not saying it'll happen, but I think it's possible. Then you stayed at 52. It's possible that they stay at 52. Then we move down 17 spots from 83 to 100. Well, we've seen them do that. Like we've literally seen them make moves like that. So that's not out of the realm of possibility. Then they pick at, you know, they get two picks out of that, uh, you know, the, the first trade. So 
They pick twice in the fourth round. It's not out of the realm of possibility. They're going to try to get in the fourth round, get another pick there because they traded one away to the Steelers for Kevin Dotson. Um, then they have what three picks in the fifth round. So they added one more pick. That's not crazy. And then four picks in round six. So we added what we added one. No, they have four picks in round six. We didn't add any from any, you know, trade. So no, I don't think anything we did was crazy to me. Unrealistic. Crazy isn't even trading up to eight to get Romo Dunze. Unrealistic. Crazy is trading into the top five. I don't think the Rams are doing that. I don't think they're getting Marvin Harrison jr. Right. right. Unrealistic and crazy is when you just start, you know, trading up, you have all of a sudden they picked twice in the, the first round. We picked three times in the second. That's unrealistic and crazy. But I think we did a good job of making this fun, making this eye-opening, and making this thought-provoking. I think that's really the name of the game. I agree. And in the comments, let us know if you want us to do this again. And our goal will be, if we do this again, we'll do something completely different. That should be the goal. Maybe maybe we'll we'll show it on screen. Maybe we'll show it, and maybe we'll do like two to three scenario so like this is scenario one so that way when the draft comes we've given everybody like three semi-realistic but very different ways in which the rams could do this draft and then we'll see what ends up happening that could be fun to have three we'll just have to be mindful when we do these again to be like okay we cannot do this thing we'll have to do it different it'll be a fun challenge i think but we should definitely do it um but let us know guys in the comments what you thought about this draft i mean again a little controversial uh a lot i expect more people to have problems with some of the picks than more people to be like that was 100 percent great uh, the chop naturally. pick you were not ready for. There was nothing that could have prepared you for that. And that's no, what I loved I about was, it. Yeah, I was not ready for it. But yeah, guys, I think that's going to do it. Thank you for uh, sticking around, listening to this mock draft. Uh, like we've said, we would like to do it again. Uh, if we do it again, it will be different. I think that'll be fun. But we want to see what you guys think about this one. Uh, The draft is approaching and Jake and I will be doing our yearly tradition of the NFL draft stream. So for those of you who are ticker on the bottom and everything. Yep. Ticker on the bottom, me screaming out each and every pick. Uh, Jake and I slowly, but like surely losing our minds, getting delirious. Oh yeah. Pizza Um, definitely will happen. Pizza. Yep. Day three. Everybody knows I order the pizza that everybody hates so much. And I'm going to probably order. I'm probably going to order the famous Sally's pizza, um, in, uh, New Haven, Connecticut. And I'm going to get that through. There's this thing. It's called gold something. I forget what it's called. Mm -hmm. But you can literally order frozen pizza online from like these like elite pizza places. Yeah, so I'm gonna they try have it. those. Yeah, they have that um for like the famous um Emo's pizza in St. Louis. I've never ordered it. I, I'm just too afraid that if I get it frozen, it won't taste the same. Well, it's not gonna taste the same, but you yeah, can make it taste so, similar. And ish, I've yeah. never had Sally's pizza, but I can tell you this. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had New Haven style? Is that the kind of the squares? No. So it's, I mean, it's like, it's basically like New York style, which you've had, you had it here mm-hmm. when you were in New York, but, um, it has kind of that leopard bottom. So like the, the undercarriage is like, it really, there's no flop of the slice of pizza at all. And it's like a charred bottom cause it's coal fired. It is the greatest pizza I've ever had. Period. And I haven't even had New ha- New Haven style in New Haven. I had New Haven style at a place, uh, Romo's Pizza in Glenmont, New York. And I was blown away. So I will be, I'll be trying that. I think that's what I'll do. I'll get Sally's frozen pizza. Jake will do that. I don't know what type of pizza I'll get, but everyone's going to hate it regardless. Uh, like yeah. They hate my pizza every year, but it'll be fun. So guys, Uh, Jake and I will be live streaming during the entire NFL drafts. Uh, It'll be live on YouTube. You can jump in the comments, hang out with us. We interact on there. My last live stream in this studio. Yeah, exactly. Because I'm moving. It's gone. 
Yep. So guys, tune in. But that's a couple weeks away. So uh, yeah. a few weeks away. Three and a half weeks. So yeah, we'll do some more mock drafts before then. But guys, that's going to do it from us. As always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. Please follow us on social media at Downtown Rams. You can follow me on Twitter at the Alexis Craft. You can follow Jake at JK Bogan. And guys, until next time, stay safe, take care, and go Rams.